Hello and uh, welcome to part three. Um, so we are ready to jump into our perspective viewport and make our 2D shape into a 3D geometry. Let's do that. Maximize the perspective. And there are a couple of ways you can do that. Personally, for this model in particular, um, I would recommend you use the bevel modifier. So when you apply the bevel, uh, we have a bunch of settings what we can use to get the right shape. Um, the reason uh, I'm using bevel is bevel gives you like three levels of extrusion and the outline of, for those extrusions. Whereas if you apply the extrude modifier, there is only one level. And for this one, let's zoom in a little bit and Start with level one, give it some height. Uh, my units are set up into inches. Uh, yours might be different, so let's see. I am maybe a little bit more. Yeah, like four four inches. Yeah, that's that's good enough, uh, considering the length of the guitar. And I would leave it as it is and turn on level two. Uh, putting a check here and give it some extrusion by increasing the height value and this one I want to give reduce the outline uh, to get nice angle yeah let's see go down just a little bit uh, 1.6 maybe too much uh, let's see how these areas are looking um, Maybe reduce it down a little bit. Yeah, this is better. We were starting to see some shading issues in this, these regions. That's good enough. And now we can do is grab the front polygon here and texture map it um, with the image we used. OK, so I think that's pretty much it for the bevel. And once you're done beveling it, what I would recommend, we right click and convert this guy to an editable mesh or poly. I personally prefer the poly. So let's do that. That way it got rid of all the information underneath. And now it's an editable poly object. Okay, um, before we jump into texture mapping, I think it's a good idea to save the file. So I'm going to file save as and I'm going to increase to bc underscore rich underscore zero two. Okay, now the UV mapping. Um, for, for this guitar in particular, I, I would like to use a multi sub object material and assign separate ID to uh, to the back and the side and assign a separate ID to the front faces, uh, this big one here, so we can uh, map the front polygon to the image. Uh, to do that, uh, it's easier if you jump into the polygon sub-object mode. I'm gonna select this front polygon and let's scroll until you get to this Polygon material ID section. Set ID uh, set up to one, which is good. I'll leave it at one. And we're gonna do uh, go to our edit menu, select inward, and all these polygons I'm gonna give an ID number two and hit enter. Now if I select ID 1, the front face is selected, select ID 2, the side and the back have ID number 2. Good enough. Let's deselect everything and get out of the polygon mode. Now let me pause and see how we're doing with time. Okay, we got time, but I don't, I don't think I'll be able to finish it in this part. So another part coming in after this one. Um, since I talked too much, uh, let's 
go ahead and open up our material editor. All right. Yeah, I'm going to change the display to 3 by 2. And right now it's set up as a standard material. I'm going to change that to something called a multi sub object. Say OK. I don't care about keeping or discarding. Eh, let's just discard. OK, that way we have new materials here. I don't need 10, so I'm going to set the number to 2. Say OK. And just quickly change the color of these guys. Um, give it any color you like. Uh, that's a Pink Floyd song. Um, all right. And quickly assign this material. And this way I can check. I have the material IDs working properly. Yeah. The yellow one is for the side and the back. And this is for the front. Um, we can start naming our material. So let's call it guitar. And let's go to the yellow one. Change the name to side and back. And then let's go to the green one. Let's call it front. Hit enter. Now it makes more sense. I got a guitar material with the front and side and back. Um, so let's start with the side and back first. Um, maybe I just want to give it some dark color. Um, like a dark gray color, you know, so let's get rid of the saturation and uh, pick something like this and say OK. Um, and I want to give it some specularity. Change the size of the specularity. And that's good enough. And the front is the tricky one. And this is where I'm going to discuss the issues you could have um, in the unwrap window. Uh, when I showed you the image in the beginning, this one here, as you can see, the image is stretched, which I was trying to map. Um, let me see how we're doing with time. Okay. Um, so to avoid the stretching, make sure the texture map you use uh, has an even aspect ratio. Um, for for example, when I got those image, I got that image for the guitar. Uh, it is more wide than the, you know the length is shorter than the width. So what I ended up doing in Photoshop, I made a blank canvas which is 600 by 600 pixel, and I copied that image here, and changed the background color. So now if it's a perfect square, you don't see the image map being stretched in the unwrap window. So let's go ahead and use this image here for the front. So I'm going to click on this button, which says none for the diffuse bitmap. Say OK. And I'm going to grab the BC Rich 600 by 600 image. All right. And we're going to turn on show standard map in the viewport. And you're not going to see it because we haven't set up the texture mapping yet, which we're going to cover in the next part. Um, but we're done with this for now. And let's actually change it to, a, from a cube, I'll just change it to a, sorry, from a sphere, I changed it to a cube so we can see the image here. All right. Um, next thing to do now is uh, set up the uh, UV mapping for the model, which we're going to cover in the next part. Thanks for watching.